everybody, let's take a look at the general prologue to the Kinnebert Tales. Notice here that I have the text in Middle English, whereas we have the side by side. When a lot of people look at the, the text, they say, wow, this is in Old English and wrong. Beowulf was in Old English. This is Middle English. This is what the, the Canterbury Tales was written in. And in case you're curious, you can learn to read Middle English. I'll go ahead and dive in. I'm the opening to the general prologue is just fantastic. As I mean, so much of Canterbury Tales is just amazing. It's still, still good. Why not April with the short of salt, the drought to March hath pissed to the rot, and bothered every vein and switch the core of which virtu engendered is the floor. So what do we see? Well, we can see the month that we have is April. And what do we know about April from the little rhyme that we learned when we were children? April what? Showers, and that's what we see here. So these are showers sweet. And what happened? The drought of March hath pierced to the road. So the showers of April have ended the drought of March. And what happens? Everything is bathed in such a sweet, sweet liquid liqueur of which bear two engendered is the fluor. Okay, so that's the flower. So these April showers bring everything to life. Uh, right, when we think about winter, everything looks dead. And then spring comes and we get some spring rain and then everything just buds out and it's beautiful. One zapper is eat with the sweet to breath and spirit hath in every hole to net. The tender coppers and the youngest son hath in the ram is half cosied on. Zephyrus is the west wind. All right, so we got a nice breeze going, sweet breath. It's a nice breeze. And that's helping everything to grow. So we're seeing this kind of emerge as one of the underlying movements here in general prologue. Everything is bringing, is springing into life. This is the, the ram, of course. It shows the impact of astrology during this time. Not astronomy, because we haven't got to the Renaissance yet, but astrology. And in case you're curious, this constellation is what would be overhead during April. Yeah, that's cool. The tender croppers and the young sun hath in the ram is half cosied on. And small fowls make a melody that sleep in all the night with open e. Ah. And of course, so what do we see here? Little birds, so we have the bird singing. It's the like the ideal of what? Spring. Oh, spring. Many people that's that that's their favorite season. So preka them not door and her courages, then long and folk to go on pilgrimages. What happens? 
everybody, right? Here we are. We see this. We see spring, everything coming to life. And what happens? It pricks our heart. It gives us a type of awakening. And what do we want to do? We want to go on a pilgrimage. And palm roofs for to seek and strong the strands to fern halls, call them sundry lawns, and specially from every shire's end of England to Canterbury they went. The holy blissful martyr so to for to seek that him hath hopen one that they were sick. We're going on a pilgrimage. So we're going away to a place that's got some significance. And then we'll come back. Right? So we start off home. And where are we going? It lets us know where we're going. Canterbury. It's just not any place. There's a big cathedral there in Canterbury and the holy blissful martyr. This is St. Becket. St. Becket got into a little bit of a disagreement with the king when he was alive, King Henry II and was giving King Henry II a lot of, you know, we could say bad press today, very critical of the king. And then the king, King Henry said, I wish somebody would rid me of this man. And his knights heard that and took it as an order to go and get rid of Thomas Becket, who was a priest. So they found Thomas Becket in church, he was praying, and one of the knights took his sword and put it through his head. I know, this is not a story for children, but it's true. And so, of course, Thomas Beckett died. He was recognized as a martyr, and King Henry II had to do public penance. And because of this, Hunterbury was viewed like a shrine when they were sick. So hope and help. During this time, it was the belief in holy relics that people could get these holy items of saints or so, uh, object that a saint might have owned when he or she was alive and it would heal them. Here's something significant. What we right, we're talking about religion, everything coming to life that was dead, right, which is what? Rebirth, season of spring. Look what's going on in the Christian calendars. We have what? The Christian festival of Easter. And this would be all part of of what's going on with the idea of everything being reborn and rebirth, and it pricks our heart, it causes us to go on a pilgrimage. This circle, we, we've seen this before. What do we see now? Yeah, this it's the, the journey of the hero again. We would leave our home, right? We have a quest, which is to go to the Cathedral of Canterbury. And of course, there'd be trials and tribulations on the way, just a journey back then. Of course, you know, they don't have Uber, there's no Tesla, they got to walk. Or if they're wealthy, they could ride a horse or a donkey. Then they would reach Canterbury, experience the resurrection right, of their souls, their spiritual, their spirits would be renewed. Which we see in what? Everything that's going on here, guys. 
This is what it's about, renewal, rebirth, coming, breaking out of winter and everything coming back. In the, and then what they do, they would return back home and they would just, as we talk, look forward to the journey of hero, they would return with gifts. And these gifts, of course, would be stories that they could relate to other people about what it was like on their journey to Canterbury, what they saw, they're praying there, touching the relics. They might've even bought some relics or false relics. And what happened when they renewed, came back and on the journey of just their spirits were renewed and they felt so much better. Right, so they have that, that sense of spirituality to share with everybody who wasn't lucky enough to go on the pilgrimage. And as you can see, we're not quite done. And so we'll pick up with a general prologue in the next lecture.